creation. God prohibits human sacrifice. He prohibits the killing of the Messiah. He prohibits, he prohibits any shedding of blood of a human kind to forgive sins. In Islam, God is most gracious, most merciful to those who turn to him in repentance. Unf unfortunately, well, I'm giving you my answer, but we do not need uh, a human being to suffer horribly and to torture to death for God to forgive us. In Islam, God is gracious and shows mercy to people. And that actually is the teaching of Jesus in the Gospels. If you look at the earlier Gospels, say in the parables in Luke, that is the, that is the, that is the, that is the Gospel. Sir, do you break the laws of God? What you, where are these laws found? In the, in the Bible? The the right. They don't all apply to me. It's the problem. Let, let, let me explain to you why. Let me explain to you why. Do you lie? Okay. Can you let me answer? Right. I, I'm now going to answer, even if he interrupts. One of the laws of the Ten Commandments is to honour the Sabbath. I'm not an Israelite. I'm not a Jew. I follow the final dispensation of God to mankind, which was given in the, the Sharia of the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace. Therefore, I do not follow all the Ten Commandments. Right. So it's not, do you follow the Ten Commandments? Yes. But do, do you honour the Sabbath? Yes. You do? Yes. See, see, on a Saturday, you don't do any work. Jesus Christ is the Sabbath. No, no, no. no. Saturday. He is. The Sabbath is not Jesus Sunday. He is Lord of the Sabbath. He is the do Sabbath. Do you eat pork? Sorry, Can I sorry, just do, to help him. Sorry, just to help him about lying. Yes. According to the Bible, no one can, but only God cannot lie. Is you get true? it? That's what well, well, does okay. the Bible, does the Bible okay. say? No, it only God cannot lie. Because God can cut, stop any plan of anyone Bible to prove him a liar. Bible's not, Bible's but not unfortunately, it says in 2 Thessalonians that God sent a spirit of deception onto the non believers. So, God, according to Paul, God, God caused deception and lying. To, to take place in the unbelievers. Yeah, What's, your question? I, What's no, your question? I don't know. Does Excuse me, lie? can I? Sorry? Does he lie? But only God cannot lie. If he said to you, I see you tomorrow and today is dead, you will prove him a liar. No, I don't. Even letting, you're not going to answer the question either. No, because I'm talking to him. That's of course why. I lie. Okay, so you've broken the law of God. I, yes, I, I, I do. I, I can't okay, have two so conversations at the same time. Sorry, you forget that you're forgiving? a woman, you can multitask. If I I'm a man, I can't multitask. Okay, I can't do I this and this. Have uh, mercy on my gender. If someone in this <laughs> land <laughs> yeah. we, we would speak. breaks one of the Have laws, a chat with my yeah. friend Nazan. And they say they're sorry, yeah. are they still going to be punished? Depending what? Will they be punished for the crime no, that they... Of course not. Okay, dude, can I... Can I, oh, I, 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 I have not. Of course not. Let, let me, of course not. Of course not. Can I, can I, or, 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 you're telling me... I, I think you're telling me. Sorry, go on. Okay. I, 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 do, I have broken most, not all, I haven't murdered and I haven't committed adultery. Oh, yeah, broken the law of God. I've broken some of the commandments in the Ten Commandments, yes. So how are you forgiven? Um, because God forgives my sins. Why? Because he is forgiving. Because he knows... No, dude, dude, he, he, dude, he I, don't, I don't need a commentary. Uh, dude, he, he forgives. Is God, is God holy? Is yes, he? yes. So he's a holy judge? Yes. So how can a, a good judge forgive you without because he, any punishment? Because he's merciful. That doesn't make sense. That's okay. not a good, that's not a good Can I ask, are you, are you a father? Yeah, hold on. No, no, you asked me lots of questions. Let me ask you a question. Are you a father? Yes. Okay, you have kids? Yes. You have young kids? Yes. When they, when they do something wrong, do you always punish them? Not every time. Why not? Are you not just? I am just. Well, why do you not punish them all the time and every time they do wrong? Because it depends on what, what, what they do. But why don't you punish them every time they do wrong? Are you not just? Wait, wait a second. Okay, I'll answer that with this. Mm. Am I a holy God? No. Okay, well, there you go. That's right. So are you saying you should punish your children every time they do wrong? No, no, no. I'm saying that right. I am not at the standard of God. Right. Okay. But you're saying your God is holy, but he's not a good judge. No, I'm not saying it. Let me explain what I'm saying. So the God, the God in Islam, has, let me explain. Because maybe, maybe we need to explain this. In Islam, God has many attributes, many names. He is holy, he's just. He's also merciful, and compassionate, and good, and so on. Many, many, perhaps 99 names. Now, God in his wisdom, another um, name of God, Hikmah in, uh, in Arabic, can choose whether or not to show mercy to someone, so, so someone who has repented, turned around, resolved not to commit sin again. God can have mercy and compassion on that individual, or if that person is a stubborn uh, rebel who persists in their wrongdoing, 
God can punish them. Now, why does God do one which... Uh, hang on a second. Well, go, 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 no, you see, God is not a machine who must do one thing all the time. In Islam, God has many attributes. Now, we see this, actually, that Jesus was a Muslim prophet. And because what he taught was Islamic. Let me give you an example. If you look at all the, most of the parables of Jesus in Luke's gospel, he manifests in his teaching exactly what I'm saying. For example, the power of the prodigal son, Luke chapter 15. Two sons, the young one, as you know, goes away. Uh, this is a parable. So it's, it's a parable about God himself, the father. The young son goes off, he, he rebels, he commits all sorts of sins. We won't go into those. He comes to his senses one day and he comes back to the father and says, you know, will he forgive me? Will he? And the father runs to the son, a very undignified thing for a Middle Eastern father to do. And, has, and puts a ring on his finger and throws a party because my son who was dead has now come to life, he's come home. Now what did the father do? Did he insist that the son be punished for his sins? Like in your, in your religion, which is not the religion of Jesus, by the way, it's a, it's a man-made religion, centuries later on, or did he, did he punish the son because he's a sorry, just God? No, he showed mercy and compassion to his son. Now, Jesus' teaching about God and salvation is quintessentially Islamic. Where you're coming from is a later religion called Paulianity. It's a religion invented by Paul and others. It's not the gospel of Jesus. So I'm calling you back to Islam, to the religion of Jesus, to the religion of all the prophets of God. Jesus told that parable, and guess, guess what? He actually is the sacrifice. So he can tell about a reconciliation because he is the reconciliation. He didn't punish the son. He didn't punish the son. That's the whole point. Your point is he must punish the wrongdoer. But Jesus in parable did not say that the son was punished. The, the, the son was shown Jesus, compassion. That's the whole point. No, it's not the point. The whole point is that Jesus was punished. But Jesus is innocent. The son doesn't have to be punished. But Jesus is innocent. How can you punish an innocent person? There is no justice in punishing an innocent person. Sin, he came sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Here's, here's another question I have. Were you born good? Can I just, I, I, I want to say something about this because I don't, I don't want to get away with this. This gentleman has insisted on justice that only a justice should happen, that God should punish the just. But do you know what he said? He said, in his religion, not the religion of Jesus, that an innocent man who's not guilty of any sin at all ever must be punished, Jesus Christ. Now that is not justice. You, in justice, the, the, the evildoer, the offender gets punished, not the innocent person. You have given me an example of gross injustice in the heart of your faith. And therefore, you have disproven your faith as from God. It's not from God. Because you want to punish innocent people, in this case, Jesus, for your sin, and you say that is justice. That's injustice. It's a violation of justice. You have just refuted yourself, sir. You've just refuted yourself. Jesus, Jesus said, no man takes my life. My God is just. Let me punish an innocent person. That is not justice, dude. Don't you get it? It's not justice. Well, if it's going to derail the conversation, probably not. I mean, with respect, it's going to. Yeah, let me speak. Sorry. No, it's fine because, like, because we are not talking about the same person. Otherwise, other people will jump in. As well. Sorry. Other people will jump in. As well. We might become the righteousness of God. Did Jesus ever sin? Did Jesus ever sin? He didn't, did he? And yet, you want God to punish Jesus. Jesus Christ never sinned. Yes, you're right. Ah. He's innocent. But he took on the guilt of man as a sacrifice so that man could be forgiven. Otherwise, there's no hope for mankind. Everybody's going to hell. Yes. Okay, let me respond. Here's another thing. Okay, let me respond to this. Another thing. Well, you have no to respond to this. The point is this. No man can, it's an important principle of the Bible and of Islam, which is why your religion is not biblical. 
No man can take on the sins of another man. It's there in Ezekiel chapter 20. The whole chapter is a refutation of the whole doctrine of Ezekiel. Let me explain. He says there repeatedly, no, no son can take on the burdens or the sin of the father and so on. What you said goes against the teaching of the prophets who explicitly rejected this idea. And the idea that an innocent man, Jesus, should take my That's sin is not... We're looking at it, we're looking at the passage. The no, hang on, you're, you're interrupting me now, dude. You're, you're interrupting you're not, you're not, you're not me. The, the, the idea that God should punish an innocent man with someone else's sins, whether or not he takes them on voluntarily, is, is morally irrelevant. The moral issue is the same. An innocent man, right, you commit a crime, you commit adultery, and I say, right, judge, no, let me... Let me I'll give, you, I'll give you a better example. Excuse me. You steal something, all right? You steal a car, uh, and you get arrested. And I say to the, I go to a court, and I say, Judge, Judge, please. I love my friend here. I'll take the punishment because he's a guest from America. I live here. I want him to have a good time in Britain. I don't want him to be punished for his stealing. I'll take the punishment, Mr. Judge. And what would the judge say in the UK? Yeah, all right, dude. You take the punishment, you go to... No, they wouldn't, because courts are, are courts of justice. And I will get the punishment. It doesn't matter if I want to take your crime or your sin on me. That's not how justice works. The evildoer must be punished. The innocent person must not be punished for the sins of an evildoer. That is the teaching of the Jewish Bible. Look up the passage in Ezekiel 20. The whole passage refutes that. It is not... Look at it up. Look at it now. We'll go through it now. Seriously. We'll go through the passage. It refutes your whole theology. As he says that... No, we'll go through it now. Listen. Please, can we go through it now? He says... He says you, do you know the passage? It says no father, no son can be held responsible for the sins of the father, no daughter of the son to the mother. This is all haram. It's prohibited in the Jewish faith, the faith of Jesus. And yet it's the foundation of your religion. This proves it's not from God, because it's not biblical. It's not a biblical faith. Should we look at the passage? So what? You're comparing... Sorry, sir, I don't want to interrupt your, um, your subject. Are you, you're not from Jamaica <laughs> or Syria. I'm just asking you that, sir. The reason why I ask you, if you want the reason, I can give you, but yes or no, you're not from Jamaica, are you? I, I'm from here. Oh, okay, sorry, I've got you from Jamaica. Anyway, I'm, remind me of a lot of people I've known in Jamaica who were mixed in with Jamaicans. I'm definitely not from Jamaica. Yes, in the same height, same height. Okay, so, anyway, so coming, ca ca coming back to Ezekiel chapter 20. Uh, we, we, the whole passage is the prophet Ezekiel refuting the idea that anyone else can take on board the, the, the sins and the punishment when they are innocent. You can't do, you can't transfer sin like that from person to person. This is refuted by God's word. And yet you believe this. Why do you believe something so contrary to the word of God? Should we look at the passage? Well, the, uh, let's read it. So you just read five verses. The first five verses is fine. It refutes your position perfectly. It's not rocket science. It is not difficult theology. The whole chapter says you cannot be punished for the sins of someone else. It's not just. And yet he's arguing that's what he believes. This is faith. It's not possible to do that. Jesus is not. Jesus is not. Jesus is not a goat. No, I know, but that's he's a replacement. No, but he's not. Human sacrifice. No, the, the the Bible repeatedly condemns human sacrifice. It's completely prohibited. You can't just switch a goat for a man like that. The Bible God, prohibits it. That's what God did. That's what no, God but does. I mean, that's Jewish God, God, No, that's that's, that's the that's claim. That's no, that's God didn't that's do that. What the New Testament teaches. No, but the New Testament is that's not. What the Hebrews. That's what the Hebrews teach. Ezekiel chapter twenty, one through five. So it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the, of the Lord and sat before me. Verse two. Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of, of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Are you come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Verse 4. Wilt 
thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abomination of their fathers. And saying to them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel, and lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, I made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up my hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord God. Right, uh, okay, I've got a, I've tried, an apology to make. It's actually Ezekiel chapter 18, not 20. My mistakes, my bad. If we go to Ezekiel 20, which I'll read here. The word of the Lord came to me, that's Ezekiel. The one who sins will die, okay? Not someone else, okay? As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord. So apologies, it's 18, not 22. Okay. He goes, suppose there is a righteous man who does what is just and right. He does not eat at the mountain shrines, nor look at the idols. He doesn't defile himself. And he goes on, he doesn't commit adultery. He follows my decrees. Suppose then, in verse 10, he has a violent son who sheds blood and does all of these things. He oppresses, he commits robbery and so on. Such, such a, a man cannot live. Okay, that, that's the passage. Then it says, he will, will not die for his father's sins. He will surely live. Yet you ask, why does the son not share the guilt of his father, since the son has done what is just and right, and has been careful to keep all my decrees? He will surely live. The one who sins is the one who will die. The important principle here is, the offender must be punished, not an innocent person. The child will not share in the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share in the guilt of the child. The righteousness of the righteous will be credited to them, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged to them. I mean, it's, it's paragraph as a Paragraph as a paragraph, the whole chapter refutes your position. Not verse 20, not chapter 20, chapter 18. My bad. This refutes your religion, sir. So, do you believe the book of Exodus is written? My God. Uh, what's that got to do with chapter 18 in Ezekiel? Um, that's a, we'll, we'll park that question on, a, on the side. It's a difficult question. It's a different subject. Yes. It, it's a, can, can we get to the point? You're, you're, you're diverting to another subject now. Can we? Can we, we, we are. The, the principle of Ezekiel 18 is very clear. This is what God says in Ezekiel, I'm oh, sorry, Exodus 34. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and it will by no means guilt, uh, clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children, unto the third and fourth generation. And how's that related to anything we've been talking about? You just you visiting. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I heard what you said. Explain how that relates to our subject. You're saying that it's impossible for a son to suffer for the sins of a father. But he just says, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon what? That's different. That's not the same thing. But no, let, me, let me explain. Let me explain. Because. <laughs> no, 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 let me explain. No, excuse me. Let me explain why. The fact that other people are punished. No, excuse me. This is going to be our conversation Okay. No, the, the, the Bible. Let me explain. You Asking me. Firstly, as a point of principle, the Bible is a collection of books. They do, contra they do contradict each other as a matter of principle. I have no problem if there is a contradiction between Ezekiel because the Bible doesn't claim to be the Word of God. It's a library of books mostly written by human beings. That's the first point. It doesn't claim to be the Word of God. There's not a single verse in anywhere in the entire Bible that says it's the Word of God. I promise you do. There isn't a verse. Uh, it's, 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 it says the word of the Lord came, it says all scripture is God breathed. Yeah, but that, that's a quote from 2 Timothy 3.16, is it not? If you read that in context, which Christians never do, it's only referring to the Old Testament. It's not referring to letters written after Paul or the Gospels. It's not written, it's not written about the New Testament, dude. No, 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 no you can't. I can, of course I can. No, well, I'm talking. No, because we're seeing the Bible. Is, yeah, do you mind? I'm, 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 I'm trying.
try and have a conversation. No, but you're so, killing the Bible. Do, 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 do you are killing the Bible. You are killing the, you're killing the Bible. Okay. And you are, you are, you are, you are, you are do, do you understand that 2 Timothy 3 16, read in context. You are killing the Bible. You are killing the Bible. Okay, fine. You are killing the entire faith. This is not an argument. No, you are killing the Bible. In context, the scriptures that Paul refers to are the Jewish scriptures. They're not the New Testament. Would you like to refute what I've just said? Would you like to counter what I've just said? But any evidence at all? I, I can give you plenty. No, not you, sir. I can no, no, but I can't. I'm not Sorry. talking to you. I'm talking no, to him with respect. What you have seen is the reason we saw You're being very rude here. No, but like yes, you are. It doesn't matter if I am or not. I'm talking to him. Is there anything you can say to in any way refute what I've just said? That that verse in 2 Timothy 6 is not talking about your Christian Bible. It's only talking about the Old Testament in context. So the Old Testament is the Word of God. Do we agree that Paul is talking about the Old Testament in that passage? I just asked you a question. The Old Testament is the Word of God. Paul thinks so, yes. Do you think so? No. So the Exodus is not the Word of God? No. The point, you're not answering my question. Does Paul refer only to the Old Testament in 2 Timothy 3 16? Of the fathers, yeah, okay. Well, you the changed it. Father, the children. You changed I it. You okay. I think before. you realize it doesn't. Not because you're, you're not answering your question. The, the Bible does not claim to be the Word of God anywhere. No, I never said that. I said that the Bible is a human product, largely, of, 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 many, of many texts. There are contradictions. Even if you were right about Exodus, and I'm not agreeing, if you, for, the sake of, for the sake of your argument, no, sorry, let me, let me, Hi. How are you? I'm trying to so, okay. he, He's walking off. He's he's walking off. So, folks, he he, uh, he doesn't have an answer. Um, so. We all know how they uh, go around there. He, 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 uh, and unfortunately, this other chap on the left won't uh, no. stop interviewing. He talked interview to you many times. He was a hackler. Yeah. So they, they can't, they can't, if, if you put what they're saying under some scrutiny, it can't stand up usually, so. I don't know who's these are. Can I give this to you? So I think once um, this guy's